we warmly welcome you into our church family as we join together to worship God this morning. We want to say a big thank you to all of you who've sent videos in. Uh, there will be lots of familiar faces and uh, voices uh, in, our, in our service this morning. We have some beautiful worship songs to sing together with the worship band. And Louise has been out on the knocker again this week and uh, there's more compelling interviews in the lockdown lowdown. Linda uh, continues bringing to life the story of creation. And there's more family fun in Task King with Rob and Katie. And a prayer focus on Thy Kingdom Come. And some thoughts uh, that are based on uh, Psalm 133, which looks at um, what a wonderful thing unity is. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been helping someone with some foreign language lessons and we've been learning the words for family. And it's reminded me that we are family, we are brothers and sisters, that God is our heavenly father and we are his dearly loved children. And as brothers and sisters, we belong to each other. We share each other's joys, we carry each other's pain and we love each other deeply. No Longer Slaves is a song all about being a child of God. We are reminded in this song that God chose us, that he rescued us and that he sets us free from our fear. And how reassuring it is in these days to know that we have a father who holds us in his arms, who loves us dearly and delights in us who knows exactly what we need, who never leaves us, and who sets us free from all our fear. Some scripture, 1 John 3, 1 says, How great is the love that the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called the children of God. And Galatians 4, 6 and 7 says, Because we are his children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, uh, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. Now we are no longer slaves, but God's own children. I am a child of God. 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 I am child of God. I am a 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 child of God. 
I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God.
Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thy kingdom come, Lord, teach us how to pray for all to know your joy, your peace and love, and know your friendship each and every day, the breath of Christ the Father.
Thy Kingdom Come is a global prayer movement that invites Christians around the world to pray for more people to come to know Jesus. What started in 2016 as an invitation from the Archbishops of Canterbury and York to the Church of England has grown into an international and ecumenical call to prayer. Maybe you started praying on Thursday for five people to come to know Jesus. Family members, friends from school or work, neighbours. Has there ever been a better time to pray for our neighbours? Maybe you could start today and pray every day until Pentecost. Who will you pray for? Wonderful to have Wendy and Daniela with us this morning. So would you like to share with us your lockdown highs? Lockdown highs? Uh, having dinner with the whole family. Um, being able to complete uni first year. First year, not, com not whole uni, first year. <laughs> <laughs> and any lockdown lows? Struggling with my mental health, like a lot. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> uh, for me, it's because it's not going very well with my, my dad and not be able to go and visit my parents. And what has helped get you through this time so far? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's um, baking and listening to my worship playlist. And is there anything that you'd like to say to everyone at church? I think just remember that this is temporary, this won't last forever, everything will be okay again. Just trying to keep that in mind. Yeah, the same. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye! Bye! <laughs> it's lovely to have Rob Gerd with us this morning. Rob, what has been your lockdown low? Well, the most difficult point of the lockdown for me has been not seeing family and friends at all. I especially miss being able to hug my three granddaughters and, and playing with them because they usually come to see me on a fairly regular basis. Um, but at the moment, of course, they're unable to visit me. So that's sort of a low point from my point of view. And what about a lockdown high? Right. Well, on, on the positive side, I have been blessed by neighbours and friends checking on me and offering to help me with things like shopping and gardening. Um, and these are even neighbours that I don't normally see or speak to. So, that, you know, that just proved to me how much people care. And how has your faith helped you get through this time? Yes, it has because I spend a quiet time every morning with the Lord and I feel able to bring all of my anxieties to him in prayer. And as I read the scriptures, I realize that there is nothing to fear 
because the Lord has all the answers to every situation in his word and, and that's really blessed me. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you. It's lovely to have Bill and Joan with us this morning. Um, Bill and Joan, what would you say has been your lockdown high? Uh, the high has been um, Helen. Our daughter Helen has come to live with us with the children and that's been uh, exceptionally good for us. She's done all the shopping and the cooking and things and it's been a, a joy to have her and the children and the dog here. Yeah. Yeah. I could say amen to that. The, uh, 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 it's been a joy having such a, a wonderful house group, which has really been a, a treasure, a treasure. And have there been, um, has there been a lockdown low for you? Mm. I, yes, for me, it's just missing. I mean, I've got Helen, but for missing all my family, you yeah, know, you, you can't see them. You can, you can do it on, you know, the, the um, uh, Skype and things, but it's just, I'm just missing people. And yeah. the family, church family, you know, that yeah. means so much. And yet, uh, you know, not to be able to s only see people on the screen rather than, you know, hug them and be there and things. So that's been really, really hard. Yeah, and I, I would agree with that. As much as we enjoy the Sunday services as they are, there is still that this element of people, friends, family, you know, so we do miss them. So what has helped you through this lockdown? Uh, well, our faith in God, really. We know that he lives and dwells within us by his spirit, that he, he never fails us. And we just know we can trust in him for everything we need. And I think we've seen that with, you know, with Helen and the children, he's brought them here. And we felt so safe and secure because she's done the shopping and the, you know, and the things. And it's just been, just knowing his presence is. Yeah. And we've seen so many answers to prayer that we just, just know God's with us. Yeah. And we know God's with us and there's no fear. Yeah. We just don't fear. Yeah. We're there yeah. with God. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything that you'd like to say to everybody at church watching this? Well, my lovely family, we do miss you all greatly. Mm. We're all in this together, although separated. And there will be a day when we come together again. And we can't wait for that. Yeah. And God bless you all. Yeah. Um, be strong. And may the Lord build up your faith. Mm so that we'll see all through this all together mm. because we know that God is with us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hi, Hester Sunday School, and welcome to my creation area. And today you find me outside enjoying my garden. The sun is shining and it's one of my favourite places to be. Where I've got all my flowers and my fruits and vegetables growing. Now, we're thinking about day three in creation. Can you remember what happened in day one? Seems like a long time ago. I'll give you a clue. In day one, there was light and dark. In day two, which we focused on last week, we had the sky and the sea. And in week three, I'm in my garden because God created the land and also the oceans and we find out in Genesis verse 9. God commanded let the water below the sky come together in one place so the land will appear and it was done and he named the land earth and the water which had come together he named sea and God was pleased at what he saw then he commanded let the earth produce all kinds of fruits and it was done so the earth produced all kinds of plants and and vegetables. Evening passed and morning came and that was the third day. Now I love spending time growing my fruit and vegetables in the garden. Most of my plants were from very tiny seeds. Let me show you some. Now some of the seeds are quite big. You might recognise these. This is a big seed. Do you know what it will grow into? 
yes it's going to grow into a very tall tree a sycamore tree some other seeds i've been planting are very tiny these will grow into very tasty lettuces and then i've got some other seeds which i've taken out of some fruit this one is from that's right an apple now i wonder this week whether you'd like to have a go at growing you could find just an empty pot or um, an egg carton. Now what do I need for my seeds to grow? Yes, I need to find some soil. So if you put some soil in, and then give it a little tap, you can sprinkle your seeds on the top and some more soil. What else do plants need to grow? I've got my soil. I'm sitting under it this afternoon, yes. Plants need sunshine, in soil and sun. And last of all, yes, plants need some water to help them grow. Now as Christians, we need three things to help us grow. We need the soil, which is Jesus. And Jesus gives us a firm foundation. We need the sunshine, which is his word. And we read that in the Bible. And we need some water, which is the fellowship we have with our, our friends and all the people at church and in our activities. I wonder if you can find a space. Can you make yourselves very, very small? Curl up as small as you can do. We're going to grow just like one of our plants. So very slowly, can you start to grow, feel that sunshine? Can you grow very, very slowly, as tall as you can? Wow! Great, growing, that was fantastic. In the Bible, we find out all about growing. And there's a passage in Ephesians that says, seek God in all that you do, so you may grow in Christ. And if we keep Jesus at the center, read his word, and enjoy fun and games with our friends who can encourage us, we will grow. Thank you, dear Father God, for giving everything that we need to us to help us grow. Thank you for giving us Jesus and your word. Amen. Hello, welcome back to The Task King. Week two, we never thought we'd make it to a second week, so here we are. I'm The Task King, and this is my assistant, Katie. First off, we've got a few messages coming this week about last week's show. I just want to read them out to you. Uh, I'll just bring them up. I'm a gorgeous Roberty. I uh, saw you on the thing, didn't really understand it, but you look great. That's thanks, Mum. That's from my mum. Uh, Boldy Rob, grow some hair. Thank you, Raymond. And I've got one here, uh, does food count as a household item? And then what about a backpack? Is Lego a household item? And does 10 elastic bands equal 10 elastic bands? And are pots and pans household items? Or is one pot and one pan two household items? Thank you, Gary McCauley. You'll find out very soon. Okay, what was this week's task? Carry as many household items as possible. First up, and first in, for bonus points this week, William Bungie. Absolutely textbook, Will. Counted off on the video as we requested. Let's take a look. Right, okay, let's take all these things off.
William, looking like a well-prepared Boy Scout off for a hike up a mountain. Who's up next, Kate? Becca Davis with Something of a Fashion Show. This season's must-have accessory, load of pegs in your hair and a basket of tap from the Sally Army charity shop. Next up, Alan, still livid from being disqualified last week. Let's see what she does. Alan, very clever use of the cage there. Standout features were your little doggy shuffle with worms underneath the cage and extra points for your fully itemised list. That was very nice, wasn't it, Kate? Big thumbs up for that. On to the Girdler household now. Can Josh keep hold of his number one position this week? Spin on, is it too heavy? Thanks, Josh and Lily. I really like that one. Kate, did you? Yes. Excellent. Shall we move on? No. Why not? Because I like them going round in circles. Next up, Ben Davis, emptying his wardrobe. Looks like Ben's one of the only people who's managed to do it by himself so far. Nice path at the end too. Mm. Here's another entry from the Davis household. 
the human unicorn. Thanks, Esther. Anything you like about that one, Kate? It was a very colourful entry. Finally, this effort from the Macaulay family, coming back from the brink of disqualification last week and near certain disgrace. Well, surprisingly enough, everyone stuck to the rules this week, and here are the final scores. In 7th place, Esther carried 43 items. 6th place, Ben, 92. In 5th place was Will with around 100. 4th place was Bex with 124. In 3rd place was Alan with 194. In 2nd place were Josh and Lily tied at 762 and in first place with a whopping 12,047 Evie McCauley. Very well done. I love that you went on for 10 minutes and you could have stopped at 800. But thanks for sticking in the, the extra 11,000 items for us. We really enjoyed your videos. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Well done to Josh for keeping the lead. Rob, what's this week's task? I'm glad you asked, Kate. This week's task is called Be Kind, Rewind. And you have to film something in normal time and we will play it backwards. And the best looking one wins. Please, parents, no questions. It really is that simple. So, you film something on your phone and then we will play it back. Bank holidays used to be uh, a really, really special time when I was growing up, uh, sort of late teens, early 20s. Uh, just learnt how to drive, had got a bit of freedom, got a car, and um, 20 or 30 of us regularly, young people, would go out and, and hang out together. We, we were near Thorpe Park, we'd sometimes go there, sometimes we'd just go to a country park with a picnic and play rounders and, and football and just kind of hang out and have a laugh together, and they were really, really great memories. Uh, bank holidays in 2020 have been uh, very different. Um, uh, not so many options available to people for where we go and spend this time. And, uh, and, and, and for many, in a sense, it's just uh, another day. I don't know what uh, holidays are going to be like in the summer, uh, but I want you to imagine that you're 
you had got something in the diary, you knew you were going to go away, but it wouldn't just be uh, you or you in the household in which you live, but it was also going to be um, your your neighbours and in fact your whole village and uh, that would probably include all of your family as well. That's what it was like in, in, uh, in, in the years when the Psalms were written, when, when people would travel as, 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 as a whole community up to Jerusalem to visit the temple for the, the various festivals. And we're going to look at Psalm 133 this morning, which is a psalm of ascent, uh, a psalm that they would sing as a community. Um, as they moved towards uh, the temple for Passover or for, for one of the other festivals. Let's have a look at it. Psalm 133, a song of ascents of David. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. This weekend would have been the, um, the big church day out in, uh, in, in Sussex down at Whiston House, and um, the last couple of years has been really amazing and special time um, for myself. and. I'm really sad that I'm not spending this bank holiday gathering with thousands of other Christians to, um, to worship God and encounter God. It's been such an uplifting time. So imagine singing these words and you're on your way to um, uh, the Jewish community's big church day out, even though it's pre-Christian times. We, 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 we know that, uh, that that's the era this song was uh, written in, this, this psalm of ascent. And uh, you're on your way to Jerusalem and the whole community is singing this um, behold, the older translations begin with, behold, how good and how pleasant it is. And behold, um, look at this, um, pay attention to this. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together uh, in unity. Um, it says good and pleasant. Now, something that is good, it's excellent, it's, it's beneficial and uh, pleasant would be uh, something that's enjoyable and and, and, and the psalmist says it's good and it's pleasant. So, for instance, in Hebrews 12 and um, 11, uh, you read about how um, the discipline of the Lord is good. And, and of course, it's right that God sometimes has to teach us stuff and discipline us um, to, to get us living in the right ways. And, 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 and so that would be something that's good, but not necessarily uh, pleasant. Um, if you look in Proverbs um, chapter 25, verse at 16 you find this if you find honey eat just enough too much of it and you will vomit and so honey um is is pleasant and but if you eat too much of it um it's 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 not good it's not good there's a reaction and and the psalmist is very keen that we understand behold look at this when god's people live in unity it's good and it's pleasant um, it's excellent and it's beneficial and it's uh, enjoyable and it's a gift from God, um, the gift of, of harmony. And then verse 2 goes on to begin to talk about uh, oil. Um, now, I, I looked in our cupboard. The only thing I could find was vegetable oil. We've run out of olive oil at the moment. And um, oil, of course, in, in uh, biblical times is, is symbolic language. It's the symbolism for... Uh, many things, but um, one of the common things it's, it, it, it's uh, uh, an image for is, is spirit. So hold that thought. Um, think of oil as spirit. Oil was also about hospitality. When someone arrived at your house after a long journey on the hot and dusty roads, um, you would pour oil on their head to refresh them. It would be similar to offering someone a cup of tea. Not just oil on the head, but oil running down the beard and not running down anyone's beard, Aaron's beard. So firstly, it's more than the head, it's abundance, it's head and beard 
but it's Aaron's beard, and Aaron was perceived as a priest, as someone holy. So the psalmist wants us to have this picture of this hospitality, uh, this, this grace poured not just over the head and the beard, but an abundance that flows down even onto the collar of Aaron's robe. Such is the generosity and the beauty of this hospitality, this oil, um, this spirit that God wants to pour out. And so we get to, to, to verse 3. It's as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Now you may have noticed in the background that we have uh, mountains. Mount Hermon was in, in, in the north of the land and it was about 9,000 feet tall. And right through the winter there would be snow on the, the peaks. And uh, because of the altitude and all the geographical stuff, there would often be heavy dew further down the mountain. Um, but Mount Zion was in the, the south and it was about 2,300 feet roughly um, tall in, in the summer months, uh, six months a year. It'd be very dry, very dusty. And it's as if the psalmist is saying, look, all that water, all that freshness, when God's people um, dwell in this place of unity, it's like all that water, that moisture that brings life and colour. Um, it's as if that were falling on the driest and the dustiest of, of, of places. And so um, we've got this beautiful picture of, of unity here in this psalm. It's good and it's, uh, it's pleasant. It's like um, the oil of the spirit, the oil of blessing in abundance on, on the head, running down the beard, onto the garments. Um, the, the hospitality and generosity of God poured out um, lavishly uh, upon us. And then this last, uh, this last verse about the dew of Hermon, uh, the, the verdant place, uh, the life, the abundance springing up in places where you wouldn't expect it. And, and, and the psalmist finishes by saying that, that place, that's where the blessing is. And yet it doesn't just happen. Unity doesn't just happen. Unity happens um, when people make choices uh, on a on a day by day sometimes even a moment by moment basis uh, about how we're going to live and uh, i just want you to watch this video Love one another. Be at peace with each other. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honour one another above yourselves. Live in harmony with one another. Stop passing judgment on one another. Accept each other just as Jesus accepted you. Instruct one another. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Have equal concern for each other. Serve one another in love. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Carry each other's burdens. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Out of humility, consider others better than yourselves. Do not lie to each other. Forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. 
Admonish one another. Teach one another. Encourage one another daily. Love one another. Spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Do not slander one another. Don't grumble against each other. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other. Encourage each other. Build each other up. Make your love increase and overflow for each other. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Live in harmony with one another. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. Clothe yourself with humility towards one another. Love one another deeply from the heart. So we have this amazing image in Psalm 133 of uh, a unity that is good and pleasant, um, that is like the oil of hospitality, of welcome, um, of, of spirit poured out and abundantly, head, beard and uh, robes. It's like dew that, that comes and refreshes dry and dusty places and it's the place where God bestows his blessing this incredible picture all these incredible encouragements that we've shared with one another uh, from 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 the New Testament these one another sayings I just want to ask you a question the last time we were in church who did you sit next to who was on your left and your right who was in front of you uh, who was behind you and when was the last time that you contacted that person, just to maybe give them a word of encouragement to see how they're doing? And in these days of separation, it's two months now since we, uh, we, we met together, I just want to encourage you to stay in touch, um, to, to, to just maintain that um, contact in that spirit of care, whether that's about sending some flowers through, leaving cakes on doorsteps, or whether it's about texting or... Or, or a myriad of ways in which we can uh, connect digitally. Just keep in touch with people, um, because this kind of unity doesn't happen accidentally. And life happens. Look, there's there's our our, our work lives, uh, there's our domestic lives, there's uh, the the whole world of um, living with regret, living in the past. Um, sometimes looking to the future rather than living in a moment. That's an issue for us. Um, there's unrealised dreams and uh, there's the fears and the concerns that will crowd in. Friends, let's stay close to, to, to Jesus. Uh, let us be so close to him that his life lives in us. Because when his life lives in us, it's so much easier to do these, um, these one anotherings. And another thing that I wanted to just say to you is um, don't live on feelings. Um, we don't uh, feel our way into acting, we act our way into feeling. And by that I mean if we wait till we feel like one anothering one another, um, the day might never come. If we just wait for, yeah, once I'm in that zone where I, I, I just want to contact and can, we act our way into feeling. We do the right things and the feelings will follow if we're not um, in that place already. So I just want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you for the contribution that you make to making Hedge End Salvation Army the, the great family it is. And I just want to encourage you to keep on keeping on as we seek to be a place where this Psalm 133 good and pleasant unity is not just a, a poem from 3000 years ago, but it's a lived out experience. Will you join me in this prayer as we finish?